You did 27 and a half years, but how right. much time did they give you, actually? I was, I was sentenced to life. I was sentenced thing. to die you in prison. You were sentenced to die in prison. To die in prison. How do you end up out? Oh, man. Man. <laughs> I went to prison, and, and, and man, I, all I can say, bro, is God bless me. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. But let's go back. I don't want you going to prison yet. I want to talk about you basically even to get locked up. What did they get you for? I was charged with second degree murder. Second degree murder. Yes. What was it? Did they get you right or wrong? They had me wrong. Okay. So right. at the end of the day, was it something where they just picked you and said you was the one? Or was it something where you was in a vicinity? Or did they just was, charge you with the wrong charge? Yes, I was basically overcharged. Okay. It was a manslaughter because everything that happened was like in the heat of the moment. Of, but they charged me with the murder. That's what they used to do then, overcharge you. I had been to the parish like three different times for different, same kind of charges, three different times. You know, and it wasn't by coincidence. It just was set up like that. Matter of fact, um, after the second time that I got arrested, the homicide detective told me, look, you'll be back. We ain't gonna never take your picture now. You'll be back. Me, not really knowing what's going on, I'm really like, man, what are you talking about? Not really understanding what he actually mm -hmm. saying to me. Not understanding that. So I'm like, man, go ahead, man. You got me bad now. And guess what? I had came right back. So like I said, the system was set up to hold us back, but we don't know we're young and unconscious. We playing a game that we don't even understand the rules to. What? But I, no, my question was, if this is a cycle that's been going on for generations, right? right? Mm -hmm. And as a kid, you seen all the people who came out and like, man, you need to quit. Are you gonna be in there just like like me? Right. Why do we keep falling back into that same cycle? Because as a kid, you're easily incorrigible. People may tell you, look, don't do this, don't do that. But what you're seeing is more prevalent than what people are telling you. Right. Right. Because all right, they said that. You, you don't start to mature until you're 25 years old. I believe mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Because you're incorrigible when you're a kid. Like, people telling you one thing, but what you're seeing every day. Who getting all the girls? Who getting all the money? Who getting all the things? I hear what you're saying, but everything I'm seeing right here is telling me something different. And you right. see the risk. You see people dying. You see people right. in prison. You see all the risks that come with it. Right. But at a young age, you ain't even be able to comprehend it as you are when you get to be an adult. So when, when your mind mature, you start being responsible. You don't know many people that sturdy that just jumped off the porch. Right. Okay, you did 27 and a half years, but how right. much time did they give you, actually? I was, I was sentenced to life. I was thing. sentenced to die you in prison. You were sentenced to die in prison. To die in prison. How do you end up out? Oh, man. Man. <laughs> I went to prison and... And, and man, I, all I can say, bro, is God bless me Thank because I learned some things for real. I studied the law for real. I started studying the law for real, right? So then I went to kind of like understanding what's going on. So I went to like helping other people who were similar situated. So I used to always feel like, look, I'm versus the state of Louisiana as it relates to this legal thing because I felt like, look, y'all took advantage of me when I knew what's going on, but now I know what's going on. Now and I ain't gonna let you do it to nobody else. Right. So every day in prison, that's how I lived. I lived to help people. I lived to make people's situation better because I was talking to the young people that was coming to the prison and I knew they didn't even understand the situation that they fell in right there, you know what I mean? So I was there to kind of be like, all right, look, let me try to give you some game. Let me show you just how wicked this stuff is for real. And they had other brothers kind of like blessing them with different kind of literature and stuff like that. What I was doing is blessing them with the legal aspect. I'm showing them, look, this how it go for real. These things that you need to know as it relates to your situation. How you wind up in the situation, how you could possibly get out of the situation. What was the worst case that you seen? I'm gonna get to you. Mm -hmm. What was the worst case that you seen that you helped a, a, a person that came into prison that was confined mm. and, and you seen that it wasn't done right and you was able to help them? Man, it was a lot of them. I want to hear the worst one. Man, I can't. I I don't have a, a one, one of the ones that stick out to you. Uh -oh. <laughs> all right. oh, all right, yeah, definitely. All right, I was on. I was at a trustee camp. Okay, right, which is Camp F, and they had a guy that I know. I'm gonna call him C. He um he had been down like like thirty years at the time. Right. 
And he kept saying, man, I want you to look at my case, bro. I want you to look at my case. I want you to look at my case. I'm like, man, you've been in prison all this time. You just want somebody to look at your case. He said, but I done got all kind of people to look at my case, bro. But, man, he said they can't help me. So he go get his case. He was on a murder charge. Matter of fact, he didn't even did the murder. He ain't did the murder, come to find out. But at the time, he just really like, man, I'm just trying to see what's going on. So when I read his um, transcripts, I'm reading his transcripts, I'm like, hold up, bro. I see that they started your trial, and then in the middle of your trial, they changed the charge to something else. And he's like, yeah, they did that. I'm like, they can't do that. I'm like, because the reason that they give you an indictment is to put you on top of what charge that they're going to charge you with before you can prepare defense. That's right. Mm-hmm. You can't change lanes once the trial starts. Right. Mm-hmm. The trial starts with Valdai, meaning when they pick the jury. They did it in Valdai. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you ain't supposed to be here <laughs> right now because of this issue right here. And he like, man, nobody ever told me this in 30 years. They kidnapped. I see, that means... Whoever you let look at your situation, they kind of like ain't knew what was going on, bro. Everybody who pers- who professed to know don't mean they know for real. Right. And you know, and a lot of people just didn't or, or do the, the, the research or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. So I was able to um, to help the brother out, man. And um, he was able to get out of the prison. Wow. Because um, of that. From the time um, you talked to him to the time he got out, how long was it? Probably was about six months. Six months you got him out? That's quick. That's, God bless him. I always say God bless the brothers. He just used me to bless him. That's right. Six months you so was able to figure case, it out. So in that case, did he have to use his lawyer? You know, you brought information to him. Did he have to go to his lawyer? No, to get no, no, How no, no, no. Work? He had to go to court. He had By to go himself? To court. I'm just saying. Or yes, 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 yes. Oh, you can do that. Your pro se. They call it a pro se oh, okay. You do it yourself. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. It's like a, um, what we call in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. It's like a post conviction. Wow. It's post conviction relief. Um, in a, in a pro in a post conviction, you pro se. Right. You can actually get a lawyer, but you're not afforded a lawyer. You, you don't, right. you know, you're not guaranteed a lawyer. Right. But if you can afford one, you can get one. Most people can't. In six months, you get this guy. Right. Did he get to come home? How old is he? You, you remember? Man, during this time, he was probably like fifty something. Fifty. Yeah. Something like that. He was. He was probably like fifty. Okay. Yeah. And this was how long? How, how long ago was that? Man, it was like in you know, twenty ten. Okay, I wonder if he's still alive. Was like a still alive? Do you keep contact with these people? No, no, no. I, you know, now that I'm home, now I run across a whole lot of guys that I was blessed to help, and every time they see me, whoever they what they be like, this the dude right here, this the one that helped me or whatever like that. In prison, I never knew how much it really meant mm-hmm. until I came home. Not only did I help the guy, I affected families. Mm. You know, I brought families back together. You know, I see it now because I'm doing the same work now for the public defender's office. And I get a chance to really actually see it. I get a chance to see families reunite. Mm. In prison, I just took it for granted. It was just like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we going to talk.